Hello and welcome to the Virtual Drive. Today I'm going to give you a few advices which you should take into account before you are even trying to build a PC. Even if you haven't purchased any components, I think this would be the right time to listen to this video. So before you buy a, or build a PC, you need to take into account a few key components and decide on what to purchase. So I, I insist you to follow this order in order to build a PC. So I'll start with the CPU. CPU is where you start building your PC because this is the component that is going to grow into a master PC, a gaming mission or whatever you decided to become because it is like the seed. So how do you select a CPU? Currently in the market, there are three different types, mainly Intel. I'm going to tell you what majority of the users use. So majority of them go to Intel and you have the Core i3, i5 and the i7. Now that the seventh generation has come, you also have the sixth generation versions. So what are the key things you need to take into account before you buy the CPU? So if you're some kind of a guy who just browses photos or goes to the internet, a little bit of word processing, then the i3 would be the best place for you. If you're someone who is going to do a little bit of applications, multimedia, a little bit of not high performance games, then i5 is the better place. And if you're going to do a lot of parallel processing, high core applications and games, then the i7 would be the right place for you. What are the other things you need to consider? There are two kinds of CPUs. Some do single threading and the other is multi-threading. So the difference between them is simple. Multi-threading, they're able to handle a lot of applications. The CPU is able to get the, get the load and the strain and is able to manage all of that. So high performance users who need a lot of applications and gaming, who need to have the most performance of your device, you should probably try the Core i7 and you should be looking for multi-threading uh, opportunities within your CPU. One more thing which you should be keeping into account is looking into the specifications of the CPU. You should be looking into the cache memory available, the number of RAM slots it can handle, and the number of CPU lanes it is available. CPU lanes is basically how many PCI slots and how much uh, uh, PCI slots it, uh, it can handle at a single point of time. For example, an NVIDIA graphics card takes about 16 lanes of uh, CPU usage. So if you are someone who is uh, thinking about putting three or four graphic cards together, you should go for a CPU that is capable of having multiple lanes, more than 30 or 40. So that would do. And catch memory is another thing you should be looking into. And also the clock speed. So high performance CPUs have clock speeds like about 3.3 gigahertz. So 3.3 gigahertz is the lowest uh, clock frequency which you should be considering if you're going for a high performance PC. After you've chosen the CPU, the next thing that you should be going for is this. This is my favorite part of the computer because it helps me play a lot of games. So this is the GPU. This is the MSI GTX 1060. So why do you need a GPU? Some of you might not need a GPU. For example, basic users, I said like, those who are willing to go to the i3 configuration, you don't need a GPU because you're not gonna do high graphic applications inside it. So those guys, you can go with the integrated Intel HD graphics, which is already available in the CPU or the motherboard. So you can go with that. Others who are thinking about going for high performance gaming or if you're going to lose, uh, use a lot of photo editing, video editing applications, you need to select a GPU. There are also GPUs which are used for data processing and the other one is for applications and gaming. While choosing a GPU, one factor you need to consider is if you want it to be expandable in the future. Graphic cards have this feature of expanding. You can have an SLI future, as it is mentioned in NVIDIA's term. It is the capability of a graphic card to be expanded. You can add two or three graphic cards to the same motherboard and you can link all three of them. 
So this is another feature which you might need to consider while purchasing a graphic card. After you are done selecting the CPU and the GPU, the next one where you go is the motherboard. So the motherboard is where you should be getting creative in future because now you buy a motherboard and in future if you are going to do a lot of expansion to it then if you choose the wrong motherboard now not looking into the future then you are going to face a lot of problems you might have to uh, reassemble your whole PC or upgrade a lot of things in future so it is better to buy a motherboard seeing your future in mind so motherboard has three different form factors but the ATX etc so these are not going to do anything about your performance but they are very essential to know before buying so what how do you choose a motherboard what are the things you need to look into you got to look into the number of ram slot uh, ram slots it has got and the main thing you need to know is the cpu that you have chosen is compatible with your motherboard because there are a lot of cpus which do not mix up with your motherboard so before ending before choosing that it is important for you to look into that matter you can find this in the website of your uh, CPU it shows what kind of slot it has got it is usually uh, mentioned in terms of LGA that is what you should be looking for and the next thing you have to be looking is if it has got uh, the integrated graphics of course it has good it is going to have it and later if you are someone who is enthusiastic about music and etc you should be looking into the audio devices it can connect to the number of audio ports it has got the number of USB 3.0 ports it has got and those kind of stuff which are really essential for you you need to take a look into that now you're done purchasing three of the components for your PC which is building up and the next thing which you should be buying are these so this is the RAM and this is probably the memory of your PC I mean it is the RAM access memory it almost directly links to the speed of your PC when you're performing multiple applications for this current generation the age that we are living in I strongly recommend you do not buy a PC lesser than 4 gigabytes of RAM you should be very careful while choosing your RAM because in case you do not have a graphics card and if you end up doing a lot of applications then the RAM is the only one that is going to come to your help. Although it cannot totally accomplish what the graphic card would do, it could help you a little bit. So I strongly recommend you do not go less than 4 GB of RAM in this current generation. And if you still want to fasten up your PC and if you end up using a lot of applications, you could go for a 6 GB of RAM. And if you are someone who needs to perform a lot of gaming, you have a graphic card, I still recommend you to go for 16 gigabytes of RAM for high performance gaming. If you do not have a graphic card, again you can have those 16 gigabytes of RAM to play little bit of games, although you can uh, adjust the graphic settings in your games and play with a, graph, a graphic card less computer with the 16 gigabytes of RAM. There are a lot of RAMs available in the market. I recommend the Corsair Vengeance and there are a lot of ones. But I recommend you to stay with a 16 gigabyte or 8 gigabytes of RAM. Do not distribute your RAM into different slots like 4, 4, 4, 4. I wouldn't recommend that. If you're trying to buy RAM, buy it as 8, 8 or 16, 16. Do not split your RAM into a lot of parts because that is again directly linked to your performance. So try to combine RAMs like buying it as a set of 8 or 16 rather than buying it as 4444 4, 4, 4, which makes a total of 16. You're almost done building your PC and now it's time to put some memory into it. So these are the memory units. You call this a HDD. These are hard disks which use a disk inside them to perform these activities. They are motorized. Another type of memory that is available is the SSD which is a solid state drive. The difference between both of them is simple. They are faster and they are more secure. I mean, not in the sense of privacy, but like they do not fail too often. SSDs don't fail too often when compared to HDDs. But proper care must be taken when you are using an SSD because if you do a lot of wrong things, 
without learning about SSDs, you're going to end up ruining your SSDs. And these are really expensive. So when should you be using a HDD and when should you be using an SSD? If you want to do some high process activities or if you want to speed up the way in your OS operates, then it is possible to put your OS, your word processing softwares and the games that you play most often into your SSD. You can have your remaining photos or other backups in your HDD. So if you're buying an SSD, you should also be buying a HDD because you need to keep things that you don't use much often in your HDD. Imagine you're a media person or you own a studio and you are someone who works with a lot of photos and videos. If you are in a situation where you need to suddenly pull out a photo from your desk and, you, and your folder shows up uh, lakhs and lakhs of uh, photos and you would be in a situation where it takes time for these thumbnails to load up. If you are using an SSD, all this would be rapidly done and there would be no lag in your processes. So an SSD is very expensive and people usually buy a small memory limit of SSD because they put in it their most required and most frequently used things in an SSD. You put your OS, you put your most frequently used softwares, for example Adobe Premiere Pro or if you're a video editing person After Effects, you could use that and the games that you play more often, you could put. What SSD does is it fetches up the files that your applications used very fastly when compared to the HDD. So that is how you use an hard disk or an SSD into your PC. So after you're done all of this, it's time to put on some power and power up your PC. That is where the power supply comes into play. We call this the SMPS, it is called the switchboard power supply. So what are the things that should be taken into account when you're buying and SMPS or power supply for your PC. The main thing you should be taking into account is the watts the power supply can withstand or it can provide. Because if you have built your PC among higher hardware components which consume a lot of power and if you end up putting a power supply with a lower power voltage, you might end up burning your power supply or you might end up ruining the hardware that you have bought. So, you should be understanding the power requirements of your PC. For example, if you are if you are using a graphic card or if you are a high-end game user and you end up buying a graphic card like the GTX 1060, GTX 1060 from Nvidia, it is strongly recommended to go for a power supply of more than 700 watts or 700 watts. To be on the safer side, I'm recommending the 700 watts. So this is what you should be keeping in mind and do not play safe or do not go for a cheaper option power supply because whatever you have invested all lies in the hands of the power supply. If you're gonna make a mess with the power supply, all your hardware is not gonna last very long. So do not look into the price point of view, buy a better quality uh, power supply, which is really important. And the final thing that you should be doing is you need a case to put all these stuff together and this is my Antec GX505 case. The reason I put the case at the last is because if you buy components, if you buy your case before you buy the components, you will be end up, you will be ending up in sacrificing uh, a few components so as to accommodate it into your case. So it is safer and better to purchase the case at the end taking into account the form factors and size of all the components that you have purchased and the amount of cooling that you'll be requiring uh, to help your uh, components cool. So these are the things you should be keeping in mind while selecting a case. I'm going to point number one, you should look into how much fans it can accommodate. Look into the cooling system, if it can accommodate water cooling. And uh, you should be looking into if it can fit your motherboard your graphic card and the number of USB 3.0 slots or 2.0 slots they provide you with the lights, the fan speeds, etc. So these are the things you can also look for some spaces for placing your memory cards and stuff like that in your PC. So style is another thing which you would be considering for sure.
So these are the things that you'll be considering while purchasing your case. And then you have the monitor. If you're a gaming person, buy a monitor. This one over here, it is a 22 inch monitor from Samsung. So I have attached the links for all the items that I showed you below. If you want, have a look at that. This is a gaming PC. I've got a GX505 case. I've got a DX79SI motherboard inside it. It is a high performance gaming motherboard. And uh, the processor is an i7 with 3.3 gigahertz from Intel. So these are the things which you should be considering before building your PC or building the components. I strongly insist you to follow the order in which I describe it so as to not regret future compatibility issues when upgrading. When you're buying the monitor, please also check into if it has the necessary slots. For example, the HDMI or the VGA slots, the one that your monitor has should be matching with the graphic card or your motherboard. This is another thing you should be taking into account. You should consider protecting your investment. If you are someone from a place where there's a lot of voltage fluctuations or you have face a lot of power cuts, especially if you are from India, you should consider buying an UPS, which is very important to protect your hardware. So I strongly recommend you to go for an UPS, which can, which does have at least 10 minutes of standby time before you could turn off your PC. So please do that too. Thanks for watching, guys. If you have any doubts, leave your doubts in the comments below. If you have liked the advices and tips that I've given, like the video and subscribe for more. Bye-bye, this is the Virtual Drive.